Hello my good students and all other friends of mine. Uh, thank you so much. This is Dr. Sami. And before I proceed, I wish to thank you so much for choosing to watch this content uh, on this channel. Thank you so much. Specifically, I want to thank uh, one of my friends, uh, Mr. Njeroge or Mr. Mwangi of uh, St. Clair's uh, Elbagon. That is St. Clair's Girls, Elbagon. And uh, even as they sit for the exams uh, this, uh, this uh, next week, I, I wish you all the best. So, girls, I uh, believe you have the best teacher around. I also wish to thank one of my, my other friends, a doctor at Kijabe Hospital, uh, Dr. Simeo. Thank you so much. You're my fan, and I know you've been following this. Thank you so much. Even Mr. Mutama, Engineer Mutama, that is. Uh, thank you so much. Among other very good friends uh, that have been following this, uh, content on this channel. Thank you so much. Today I want us we go through the chemistry of gases. The chemistry of gases. Chemistry of gases covered under what we call the chemistry of non-metals. Uh, the oxygen, hydrogen, carbon, nitrogen, uh, chlorine, sulfur. There are several gases that are covered in there. That's what we want to go through. Otherwise, welcome. Okay, this will be the first part of the chemistry of gases. Uh, we shall have more because th there are quite a number of gases that we need to, to cover. So this is the chemistry of gases. And uh, for the gases that I'm going to discuss, they include the following. We have oxygen, hydrogen, carbon-4 oxide, yes, carbon-2 oxide, nitrogen gas, nitrogen-1 oxide, nitrogen-2 oxide, nitrogen-4 oxide, ammonia gas, then we have sulfur-4 oxide, sulfur 6 oxide, uh, hydrogen sulfide, chlorine gas, then hydrogen chloride, methane, ethene, ethyne, and argon. These are 18 gases that we cover in high school. So what I'm going to do is to cover them in detail. We explain what exactly we, we talk about, the chemistry behind every gas. Now, the approach that I'm going to have, I'm going to discuss the laboratory preparation of each gas. Then we're going to discuss the reagent that we need and a catalyst in case the preparation of the gas requires a catalyst. Then the chemical reaction leading to the formation of the gas. Then how do we dry the gas? The drying agent, the mode of drying that is. Then how do you collect the gas? Yes, that one I'm going to, to discuss. Then some physical and chemical properties of the gas will be covered. And then finally some uses of the gases. So my student, that is the approach, the area that I'm going to concentrate with as we discuss each gas. Maybe generally we look at the common drying agents of gases, the common drying agents, like the concentrated sulfuric acid. Bear in mind it is concentrated. Yes, concentrated sulfuric acid, the solid calcium oxide, yes, solid calcium oxide, the anhydrous calcium chloride, yes, another drying agent. We can use a, a chemical called silica gel. Maybe not common in high school, but it's a good drying agent that is commonly used. Okay, the four substances, they have one property. They are highly hygroscopic. They can easily absorb water vapor from the gases or even from the air. So that's why they qualify to be good drying agents for gases. Uh, that is a very important point there that a suitable drying agent should not react with the gas. That is, you know, like factors to consider when you're choosing a drying agent. The gas and the drying agent should not react. Yes, they should not react. So bear in mind that my student. We move on. Yes, we move on. Another general idea that I want us to get before we discuss the gases, how do we collect the gas? The different methods that we use to collect the gas. We start with the first two. The first one here is called upward delivery. You can as well call it a downward displacement of air. If you decide to use the word downward, displacement it should be complete that it is displacement of air look at this one the illustration here the delivery tube is facing up so that's why it is upward delivery why is it called downward displacement of air uh 
this one, and remember it is for the gases that are less dense than air. So the gases, once the gas is collected in the gas jar, it occupies the upper part of the jar. Remember the gas jar is upside down. So the air that was inside is pushed down, is displaced downward. That's why this method can as well be called downward displacement of air. So my student, I hope now you get it. Remember, you can just call it upward delivery without too much of repetition there. The second method here is a downward delivery. You can see the delivery tube is facing down. The gas is being poured down. This one is for the gases that are denser than air, heavy gases. Otherwise, as we can call it, we can call it the opposite, the opposite of the first one, upward displacement of air. For the same reason, when the gases get into the gas jar, it occupies the bottom part because it's a heavy gas. The air that was inside is pushed upward, upward. That is upward displacement of air. We move on. Uh, method three, this method is called over water method whereby we use it for gases that are slightly soluble or generally they're insoluble in water. We collect it over water. Maybe some old books will call it uh, the displacement of water, but we call it over water method. Then we have the use of a syringe. In case I need my, a dry gas, I can go direct and collect it using a gas syringe. Remember it is a gas syringe, not maybe the ordinary liquid syringe. That is it. When the gas is required dry or other, if we need a definite, for example, I'm doing a rate of reaction uh, uh, process, I, I can try to use a gas uh, uh, syringe so that I can be able to determine the volume of the gas collected, maybe per given uh, period of time. So that one is called uh, the use of a ceiling. Yes, we can use this method, not very common. Uh, it's called the condensation method. Like if I want to collect steam or another gas we call nitrogen fall oxide, uh, I can simply use a YouTube there that is immersed in ice cold water or other ice cubes and the gas will uh, liquefy there. So this one is for gases that are easily or can easily uh, liquefy. Otherwise, um, we can be innovative and collect gases using balloons and any other method. So, but we have discussed the first five. Five very important methods that we can use to collect gases, my student. Do not forget because I will be mentioning them, I'll be quoting them as we discuss the gases. Uh, kindly uh, note the five. So, remember how we have, uh, or what we have said. Upward delivery, you can see it there. Downward delivery, you can see, yes. Uh, then, over water method, you can see the, the illustration. The use of a syringe, you can see the illustration, and then we have, yes, the condensation method, and we can use Okay, moving on, uh, now we can start with the first gas, oxygen, oxygen gas. Good, laboratory preparation, what reagents do we need to prepare oxygen? That is the first set of reagents. I can use hydrogen peroxide and a catalyst, manganese 4 oxide. So my student get that, hydrogen peroxide, manganese 4 oxide. I can use sodium peroxide and water. That's a different set of a reagent there. Otherwise I can heat potassium manganate 7. I can just heat and I'll get the, 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 the oxygen. I can use the manganese 4 oxide as a catalyst there, but even if I decompose it direct by heating, it will give me oxygen. I can do heat sodium or potassium chlorate. You can see the formulas, the formulas of these. And of course I heat. Then they give me oxygen. Otherwise I want to discuss the first two. Yes, we do the first setup. You can see a dropping funnel. In the dropping funnel, you add or you place sodium peroxide. In the round bottomed flask, we use, now we place the catalyst, manganese 4 oxide. So you can see, then of course the gas comes out and it's collected over water. Why over water? It is slightly soluble in water. Oxygen is slightly soluble in water. In, in this case, I do not require it dry. Then I move on, setup number two. Good, the very same setup, different reagents different reagents. 
like uh, the dropping funnel now in this case has water the round bottom of the flask has sodium peroxide my student get this the setup is the same but we have in, you know used different reagents and uh, the method of collecting the gas the same uh, you can see over water and that is the setup uh, maybe the chemical reaction taking place in the first setup hydrogen peroxide is decomposing in presence of that catalyst in presence of manganese fall oxide and of course we get water and oxygen gas so remember there is a catalyst there that you need to include in the equation uh, sodium peroxide no need of a catalyst these are normal reactions then uh, sodium hydroxide reacting with water you get sodium hydroxide and oxygen gas the reaction is there well balanced for you my student you can see it uh, how do we dry oxygen we can use concentrated uh, sulfuric six acid i can also use calcium oxide i can use anhydrous calcium chloride or even silica gel. so there's no limitation with oxygen all these uh, drying agents the four of them as we mentioned earlier will work so how do i collect the gas i can use over water method in case i do not require it to dry why do i need to use this the gas is uh, slightly soluble in water good i can use a syringe in case i require this gas dry that is it that is it how do i confirm the confirmatory test for the gas how do i confirm the gas oxygen relies on, on what we call rekindle a glowing a splint so for my student if you ask to describe you only need to light a, 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 a splint uh, okay put out the flame then you will have a glowing splint then you lower it into a gas jar that is full of oxygen and what will happen the the, the burning splint will rekindle otherwise uh, in one of my uh, whatever you know you know in one of my uh, videos yes in one of my videos i did uh, prepare oxygen so you can review and see that my student some physical property oxygen is colorless oxygen has no smell it is odorless it has no taste it is tasteless uh, it is slightly soluble in water that is exactly what we've said and that's why we can collect it over water uh, it boils at negative uh, 183 uh, degrees celsius uh, it is a gas that supports combustion those are just but some few physical uh, properties now we go through some few chemical properties and uh, uh, basically elements be it metals or non-metals they will burn in oxygen to produce their respective oxides um this oxide can either be basic can be neutral can be amphoteric depending like uh the first one you have magnesium burning to give us magnesium oxide that is basic sodium burning with a yellow flame remember the first one burns with a white flame the second one with a yellow flame then you get uh sodium oxide which is basic or alkaline carbon will burn with a yellow flame yes the the, the glow yellow glow and it will give us an acidic oxide that is carbon four oxide otherwise that is when you have excess of oxygen in case you have limited oxygen the carbon two oxide will be formed and this one is neutral um that is with limited uh, supply or that is with sulfur four oxide uh sulfur oh yeah with the sulfur sulfur four oxide gas is formed this one and this is an acidic gas generally non-metals non-metals will give us acidic oxides if not basic a uh, neutral and the metals will give us the basic or amphoteric because remember if i had aluminium a pure aluminium and i burn it in presence of oxygen excess of it and get aluminium oxide that is amphoteric that is it can behave as a gas and uh, as an acid and as a base at the same time so otherwise elements will burn in uh, with a distinct flame and that can be used in uh, the test for cations especially the the metals the qualitative analysis of cations moving on um something very important here we call the reactivity series how different elements especially the metals will have uh, a different affinity for oxygen that is some of them will combine with oxygen very fast some will react 
very slowly and that gives us what we call the okay you can see there potassium sodium lithium calcium magnesium aluminium carbon yes carbon is an metal but it is included there so that you can tell you can easily tell the metals that are below carbon and why do we need to know that for instance when you're doing metal extraction uh, metals that are below uh, carbon can be extracted by reduction simply because carbon can remove now the oxygen that is combined yeah, with these metals so that's why it's important to know where exactly carbon is then you have um, iron yes after zinc iron tin lead hydrogen uh, and even hydrogen again non metal but you need to know its position there then copper mercury silver gold and platinum uh, with hydrogen for instance it brings in, in the issue of acids like the metals above hydrogen can simply react with dilute acid but metals below hydrogen cannot react with dilute acids why is that possible because hydrogen now it's more reactive than the metal below it so the metals below it cannot displace hydrogen ions from the acids that is a concept that you need to know and you can see that's the reactivity of metals except the two non-metals there we move on some uses of oxygen it can support life or it is used to support life and uh, like mountain climbers deep sea divers in hospitals especially for patients with breathing problem that is a respiratory problem or in incubators for uh, children the, the infants that is or people that are uh, need to undergo some anesthesia the, that is basically how it supports life then issues like welding cutting of metals like uh, what we do we make what you call the oxyacetylene flame or oxyhydrogen flame a very hot flame that can go with temperatures over 2000 that is used either to cut metals all in welding so for my student you should know that then oxyhydrogen flame can be used uh, as part of rocket fuel to propel a, a, a rocket a mixture of uh, charcoal petrol and liquid oxygen can be used in as an explosive so that is that uh, oxygen can also be used in refinery of steel remember these are commercial uses my student don't tell me why didn't we say oxygen is used in rusting oxygen is used in germination those are just natural uh, uh, uses of oxygen but you're talking, uh, talking about uh, the commercial uses the commercial uses of oxygen good we are done with oxygen and now we go to hydrogen the second gas covered in form one and uh, uh, what uh, that is water and hydrogen water and hydrogen and uh, we move on we move on by steroid I hope you're good you're good we go through hydrogen yes rebuttal preparation of hydrogen reagent I need an appropriate metal and an appropriate acid when I combine the two I get an acid and hydrogen gas so this is a general reaction only that I need to be very specific when I'm uh, preparing hydrogen good uh, that is it uh, an appropriate metal an appropriate acid uh, for instance I can use hydrochloric acid and zinc metal copper two sulfate can uh, should be used as a catalyst in this case so the reaction is a bit slow but when you use copper two sulfate the reaction is faster so my student I hope you've gotten this we only need to go specifically now to some questions uh, and then maybe we discuss um, a question there explain why the following reagents cannot be used to prepare hydrogen gas okay like uh, that one sodium or potassium and hydrochloric acid why can't we use that zinc metal and dilute nitric acid again why can't we go for that one it's not appropriate copper and dilute sulfuric acid again why not possible not, not advisable calcium and uh, dilute sulfuric acid so the four reagents there we have or other what you call the, the four uh, combination cannot give us hydrogen in one or the other it is not appropriate so let's go ahead and answer why it's not advisable the first category the first set potassium and sodium with acid you are creating a small bomb my friend so they react explosively so the reaction is not safe with the second one why can't we use zinc and dilute nitric acid nitric acid is a strong oxidizing agent 
So immediately hydrogen is produced, yes, it reacts with oxygen, or rather it is oxidized, and water is formed instead. So that is not a good combination as such. Then sulfuric acid and calcium, that reaction leads to formation of an insoluble salt, that is calcium sulfate. And what happens? And my students, this is a very common question they will ask you. It's, it's not just for calcium and sulfuric acid. This reaction will keep on repeating. Anytime you have a solid and a solution uh, reacting to form an insoluble salt. So the insoluble salt formed covers the metal. And of course the reaction stops because the metal is no longer in contact with the acid. So that is not appropriate, but the answer is there, you can read. Uh, why copper and sulfuric acid? Copper is below hydrogen in the reactivity series. So it cannot displace hydrogen ions in the acid. So it cannot react. Generally, we say copper does not react with dilute acid. So you don't get any hydrogen. So a very important part there, my friend, my student, kindly note the four, uh, Okay, we, we move on. Now, the setup. Okay, my students, you can see there a dropping funnel with the dilute hydrochloric acid. You, you can as well decide to use uh, sulfuric acid, no big issue there. But we're using uh, hydrochloric acid and zinc. Of course, the gas is collected over water. That tells you hydrogen is uh, insoluble in water. So you can see the setup. For this one, I do not require the gas uh, dry. So chemical reactions, yes, the hydrochloric acid reacts with the zinc. That's an acid and a metal giving you a salt and hydrogen gas, hydrogen gas thereof. Okay, the equation is there, well-balanced, state symbols, well-indicated, my student. Train yourself to write such general equation. In case I'm using magnesium, yep, though we say magnesium is a bit expensive, we can't go for it, but the reaction with uh, several acids, especially hydrochloric acid and sulfuric acid, it is just a safe one. And you can see the reaction uh, there, the chemical equation. So how do I dry hydrogen? Yes, I can use concentrated sulfuric acid, I can use calcium oxide and hydrous calcium chloride, silica gel. It's nothing restricting us in the other, that case. So hydrogen does not react with those re drying agents there. So how do I collect hydrogen? I've said I can use over water method. Yes, I can use over water method because hydrogen is insoluble in water. Otherwise, I can use a silage or a gas silage. I can as well use upward delivery in case I need it dry. So you can see there, that one, and I can use upward delivery. And that tells you hydrogen is a very light gas. It is a very light gas. How do I confirm the presence of hydrogen? Confirmatory test. Hydrogen will extinguish a burning splint with a pop sound, a minor explosion. That's uh, the pop sound you're talking about. So what do you need to do? If you are told to describe, you use a burning splint, that is you light a splint, then you lower it, carefully lower it into a gas jar. And remember, it's, actually the gas jar should be upside down because the hydrogen is very light. So you, you, you introduce it into a gas jar full of hydrogen and of course, the burning splint will go off, my student, and a pop sound will be produced. A common mistake the student will do is just to, or make it to just say, to say that hydrogen burns with a pop sound. My friend, it's not correct. Hydrogen, especially pure hydrogen, will burn quietly with a blue flame, no pop sound. But this one, it's the test because hydrogen is mixed with air. Some properties, colorless gas odorless, tasteless, insoluble in water, less dense, no? Actually, we say hydrogen is the lightest gas that we know, or that we, we cover in high school and even after high school. So, the, because it is less dense, we can collect it using upward delivery. Uh, it is combustible, it can burn, okay? But it does not support combustion. That one you should know. It does not support combustion. Okay, some chemical properties. We are going to cover two. What happens if you burn hydrogen, pure hydrogen? A pure hydrogen, a pure jet, that is a pure jet of hydrogen will burn with a blue flame. 
yes so this one it's a blue flame and a colorless liquid is formed get that it burns the blue flame and it must be pure from a jet and then a colorless liquid is formed what exactly is happening hydrogen reacts with oxygen to form water so the colorless liquid is water if you are testing how will you know that the colorless liquid is water you can use an hydrous copper two sulfate that is white so when it is in contact with the colorless liquid that is water it turns uh, blue okay or rather if you're using anhydrous cobalt 2 chloride yes it is blue and anhydrous it, if it touches water it becomes pink the test for water maybe that one i've not written here but i've just described for you okay the natural the, the, the question there is there it is a neutral uh, liquid yes water is neutral and you can see there good that is a very important question for my student you are not supposed to prepare too much of oxygen and of hydrogen in the laboratory because that mixture will burn explosively so the pop sound you can now imagine if you had too much of hydrogen so it will be an explosion of a higher magnitude that is so that's a question that you should uh, know uh, then we talk about the reducing property of hydrogen yes so hydrogen can remove combined oxygen from metals that are below its itself in the reactivity series and that one we had even mentioned earlier that is a, 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 a reduction process for for instance zinc oxide lead to oxide copper to oxide if you subject them that is hot of these hot oxides you subject them to dry hydrogen then automatically you, you're going to, to to observe a reaction taking place a reduction like that is the first example there you can see so a black copper two oxide changes to brown it is reduced of course hydrogen is oxidized to water like you have that setup you have dry hydrogen getting in uh, the black copper two oxide the common uh, question observation here so the black substance will change to brown yes that is copper two oxide will change to copper metal and uh, of course the hydrogen the excess hydrogen should be burnt yes should not be allowed into the air because it can easily catch fire and explode and i set up for you my student there we move on uses of hydrogen hydrogenation that is hardening of oil or what you call unsaturated uh, hydrocarbon and uh, the condition you need a catalyst nickel catalyst a temperature of 150 degrees celsius there about so like the formation of margarine that is the process uh, hydrogen can be used in weather forecast balloons although nowadays they prefer using helium they can use a mixture of helium and hydrogen because it's a lighter gas yes it can help the the weather forecast men to float their gadget into the air very easily their cameras and that manufacture of ammonia that is in harbor process hydrogen is used in the manufacture of hydrochloric acid again it is used and then it is used as a rocket uh, fuel and um, it is used in making of uh, oxyacetylene flame so that like we said in uh, oxygen so even hydrogen is used in the same good those are the uses and again these are commercial uses sometimes they will be very specific they want to uh, maybe you to state the industrial uses they are more or less the same the industrial uses the commercial uses more or less the same but for my student maybe in an exam you may be expected to state one two or three you don't need to worry so much it is easy to memorize that's a question for you student and that one i had answered so i i, I may not go to the detail of answering that question because i've just mentioned it and uh, we are good to go to form two topic carbon and its compound and this gas is covered yes in the very last topic of form two carbon four oxide carbon four oxide and maybe maybe i take you back to topic number three the bonding in carbon four oxide 
a very important concept there. Look at that. Carbon is atomic number 6, electron configuration 2, 4. Oxygen, atomic number 8, electron configuration 2, 6. And what does that mean? Carbon requires 4 electrons, yes, to be stable. Oxygen requires 2, yes, oxygen requires 2. And these two are non-metals, so they will bond covalently. There will be sharing of electrons. So we want to see what exactly will happen. Uh, look at this. Let's start with the carbon. Carbon has four in the outermost. And for this case, we are considering the, the red dots for to represent the electrons for carbon. So you can see the four of them. Yes, they are distributed there. Then oxygen will have to donate two electrons to be shared. So like in the first case, I'll have two. Yes, uh, uh, an oxygen electron and another oxygen electron there paired there to form a covalent bond, two of them, that's a two covalent bond, at the same time on the other side. So if we consider carbon, it has eight electrons in the outermost energy level. The same case with oxygen in this case, there are four uh, electrons outside, two pairs, and of course the four shared there. So this oxygen has eight, this oxygen has eight. So this is the bonding in carbon phenoxide, a very stable uh, bonding there. So you can see Yes, the double covalent bonds, yep, the double covalent bonds and the like. So for my student, that is the bonding in carbon for oxide. So laboratory preparation. We go, we go, we go, yes, we need an acid and a carbonate. An appropriate carbonate and an appropriate acid. My student, get it, get it well. A carbonate reacts with an acid. And for this case, it can even be hydrogen carbonate. We get salt water and carbon follows the gas so the gas that we intend to to uh, prepare so remember in this case again an appropriate carbonate and an acid should be used otherwise any combination that gives us an insoluble salt it's not appropriate for this case for instance we can use the marble chips that is the calcium carbonate and hydrochloric acid a very good one there because what exactly do we expect Though, though, yes, we can go through that question. Explain why uh, the following reagents again cannot be used to prepare here. Okay. Calcium carbonate and dilute sulfuric acid. Why can't we use that? Again, that one I've just said. A, 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 a reaction that will lead to formation of insoluble salt, like this one, it's not appropriate. In this case, calcium sulfate will be formed and it will cover the carbonate, calcium carbonate, and the reaction will stop after a short time. The same case with the equation number two, uh, even the number three, the answer is all the same. There will be formation of an insoluble salt, specifically like the first case I've said. The second is barium sulfate, the other one is barium chloride, yep, um, and uh, the reaction will stop after a short time. So the formation of the insoluble salt. That one, that one, my student, I've said that's a question that we repeat itself very many times. The setup for this one, we have the first uh, chamber here, a dilute hydrochloric acid from a dropping funnel, uh, the round bottom flask has the marble chips, calcium carbonate, then the second one has a sodium hydrogen carbonate, yes, the, uh, the sodium hydrogen carbonate, in case I do not have that, I can use water, the reason for this, because I will not explain further, the hydrochloric acid gives out the fumes, the fumes of HCl gas, so they are absorbed by sodium hydrogen carbonate. If I don't have that, I can use potassium hydrogen carbonate, I can use water. Then I dry the gas using concentrated sulfuric acid. Then, of course, I collect the gas over water. Uh, like in this case, I can use mercury. In case the school is so advanced, I can use mercury. Because I've already dried it, I cannot collect it over water. My student, that is a common question you'd be asked. Identify the mistake. In case they wanted to prepare dry gas, then they collect it over water. That's a mistake. Yes, that is the mistake the, in the setup. Like for this one, I cannot use water. I'm using mercury. Otherwise, I should use the downward displacement. So that is the setup, my student. Chemical reaction. Like you can see that. Yep, well balanced. Calcium carbonate and HCl. You get... Uh, this should be calcium chloride. Yes, I hope you can do a correction for that. This should be calcium chloride. So the O should be L and a 2 there. Then the, the rest of the story is 
correct. Um, other reagents that we can use? Yes. Good. Uh, all these kindly my student collect here. Yes, collect here. That this should be zinc chloride. This should be uh, magnesium chloride. This should be copper 2 chloride. All that, all that, all that. So, sorry for the uh, mistake there. But I hope my student, you've corrected that. Good. Even that one, this should be sodium uh, chloride. Uh, even that one, potassium chloride. We move on. How do you dry carbon monoxide? I can use, I can use uh, the three reagents. Um, basically, calcium oxide may not work. This is an acidic gas that is a, a basic uh, substance. Maybe there will be a reaction. So, but concentrated sulfuric acid. Uh, moving on, a method that we can use to collect carbon monoxide. We have said you can use over water method. Yeah, the gas is slightly soluble in water. Then I can use the downward delivery. If I require this gas to dry, this is a heavy gas. That's a, a gas that is denser than air. So you can see the method, downward delivery. Confirmatory test. How do I confirm that a gas is carbon monoxide? I use lime water. I use calcium hydroxide. And calcium uh, hydroxide will form white precipitate with carbon monoxide. So if you are describing this, you just pass the gas through lime water and the white precipitate is formed. If you continue by, uh, that is, if you continue passing the gas for a long time, the, the white precipitate will dissolve. But the first reaction is what I've written there. Calcium hydroxide with cal, uh, carbon monoxide calcium carbonate that's the white substance we are talking about there then when you continue passing for a long time the ppt uh, dissolves what exactly is happening the calcium carbonate in, in water the, the the product for the first reaction continue to react with carbon monoxide and calcium hydrogen carbonate is formed a very uh, soluble salt there about and you can see it's a colorless liquid we go on, my student, physical properties of carbon monoxide. It has no smell, it has no color. But we do say it has a characteristic uh, sweet smell. And not, not the smell, but sweet taste. And that's why it is used to preserve uh, soft drinks. They say it en enhances the taste of the, 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 the drink. Uh, I'm not a fan of the soft drinks, some of them. Uh, neither am I a fan of the hard drinks. But that is it uh it is slightly soluble in water and it forms weak carbonic acid so that is it these are some of the physical properties it is one and a half times denser than air so for that reason it is collected by downward delivery so it is a heavier gas it's a heavy gas it does not support combustion and for that reason we're going to see it is used in uh making fire extinguishers and it is not combustible. It is not combustible. It cannot support combustion. It's of it's not combustible. So some chemical properties. We want to look at how it when it dissolves in water, it forms a weak carbonic acid. That one we say. And I can see that. Uh, remember this one. It's a reversible reaction. So this should not be a one directional uh, equation, but should be reversible. So that is it. What exactly happens? That's what exactly happened. A very weak carbonic acid there. Actually, you cannot have carbonic acid in a, in a laboratory. It cannot be. It cannot uh, be stored. Uh, a moist blue litmus paper will change red when it's exposed to a carbon monoxide. So it is an acidic gas. Then reaction with carbon. Uh, carbon monoxide can be reduced to carbon oxide when uh, passed over hot carbon. Hot charcoal. That is a reaction that can easily happen. Uh, good, some uh, chemical properties. Yep, when it reacts with magnesium. That is a very common uh, question, my student. When you lower a burning magnesium in a gas jar full of uh, carbon monoxide, it will not go off. Unlike when you're lowering 
a, a burning splint. A burning splint will go off, a burning magnesium will continue to burn. The reason and the, 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 the explanation to that, burning magnesium produces a lot of heat, yes, that will decompose carbon oxide to oxygen and carbon. The oxygen so produced will encourage further burning. My student get it that and get it well. What will be the observation? Some black specks of carbon and white uh, powder there, that's magnesium oxide. Okay, you can see that reaction there. Uh, magnesium will be oxidized, carbon will be reduced for uh, carbon oxide will be reduced to carbon. So get that. Um, carbon oxide does not support combustion. However, magnesium produces a lot of heat that decomposes carbon oxide to carbon and oxygen. The oxygen so produced allow burning to continue. So my student get that explanation well. Some uses of carbon oxide used in solvay process uh, for the manufacture of sodium carbonate uh, in the preservation of aerated drinks or soft drinks, yes, for two reasons. We've said uh, it has a sweet taste, that is. And again, it cannot encourage the growth of a microorganism that makes maybe the drink and make a drink to go bad very easily. So that is it and that is it, my student can be used as a refrigerating agent for perishable goods, for instance, ice creams, etc, etc. Reason for that, the dry ice, that is solid carbon oxide, can easily sublime and leaves no residue. It unlike water for this case. Water will melt, leaving uh, behind the liquid water. That is ice. Ice melts to give us water. It can be used uh, in making fire extinguishers, because for two, two reasons, actually three reasons. One, does not support combustion. Two, it is denser than air, so it blankets the fire. It covers the fire like a blanket. Three, it is not combustible. The gas itself cannot burn. Three reasons why, that is three reasons why carbon oxide is used in a fire extinguishing. Uh, it can be used in making a baking powder. Um, maybe I have some images for you like that one. You can see. That is solvay process, and you can see carbon oxide being used in the solvay tower, in the carbonating tower there, where it reacts with ammoniacal brine, etc, etc. But with solvay process, that one I have covered for you in one of the videos, my student go and watch that one. I move on, maybe some more images. Wow, you can see soft drinks, uh, the variety of them. They are preserved using carbon oxide. Okay, the making of fire extinguisher, you can see that's a fire extinguisher made of, uh, that is filled in uh, with carbon foil oxide. Yep, ice cream, if you are a fan of it, the ice cubes, not, not necessarily the ice cube from water. These are dry ice cubes that are just placed in, in it at the bottom of the, 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 the box that you see there. And uh, it help in uh, preserving preserving the ice creams there, among other things, my friend. Uh, state the properties of carbon oxide that make it possible to be used in preservation of soft drinks, that what I've said. Making fire extinguishers, that what I've said as well. Preservation of uh, perishable go uh, goods, e.g. ice creams, again, that what I've said. Good. And we do carbon to oxide. Carbon to oxide. So far, oxygen done, hydrogen done, carbon to four oxide done, and we do carbon uh, two oxide. Maybe this will be the last one. We're doing part one of this video. Maybe I'll do more later. After you comment that the work is good, it has helped you. So I'll, that I think will encourage me to do the rest of the gases. Ah, uh, the bonding. So like we did with carbon four oxide, we can talk about the bonding here. Uh, carbon, atomic number six. Oxygen, atomic number eight. The carbon atom requires four to be complete. Oxygen requires two, again, to be complete. So let's see how exactly the bonding will look like. Now, the red uh, dots there represent the electrons for carbon. 
Yes, carbon has one, two, three, four. Yes. And oxygen has six of them. Now, what exactly will happen? A carbon atom will contribute two electrons to be shared by two from oxygen, one for each. You can see there. So there will be formation of ordinary covalent bond. Because what is a covalent bond? It is a bond formed uh, by sharing of electrons, whereby the electron pair shared you know, is, you know, comes from both. That is, each atom contributes one. So this is an ordinary covalent bond. This is another ordinary covalent. However, in that case, carbon will have, uh, that is six in total. Yes, carbon. Oxygen will have eight, of course, because this pair will be outside. So the, the, the another pair, that is oxygen just contribute one pair. Without carbon contributing a, a, an electron, a whole pair of electron from oxygen is shared. So you can see the electron shared, six of them, plus two, oxygen is five. Six of them again, plus two, carbon is fine. So what exactly has happened? Two ordinary covalent and a dative covalent bond there. So you can see that? Yes, so the bonding, two ordinary covalent, a dative covalent, or what we call the coordinate bond. Otherwise, a lone pair of electron and a lone pair of electron from for, for oxygen and carbons, the, the, as you can see there. And that is good, uh, a good illustration there. Formation of the dative covalent. Uh, now, the laboratory preparation of carbon 2 oxide, we can do what is called dehydration of methanoic acid using concentrated sulfuric acid. We can dehydrate oxaric acid, yeah, or ethane 1 2 dioic acid using the same concentrated sulfuric acid. Um, in this case, concentrated sulfuric acid acts as a drying, not drying, a dehydrating agent. Yeah, a dehydration. It removes the elements that forms water that are combined in other chemicals. So, in this case, heating is very necessary. And sodium methanoid can also be used instead of methanoic acid. So, first it is converted to methanoic acid, then dehydrated to CO. So... As well, the method number three, we can still do reduction of carbon four oxide using carbon. I think that reaction we had seen it before. Uh, before we proceed, yes, that sign there, it's a caution, danger. Carbon two oxide is extremely, extremely poisonous. Many people have died out of this gas. Therefore, my student, it should be prepared in a fume chamber or in open. Or rather, if it's not a must, we cannot. Personally, I've never prepared a carbon two oxide with my students. So, by discussion, what we have said, it's enough. Believe and it's enough because the gas is extremely poisonous. You cannot handle it that easily. The first setup, you have methanoic acid in a dropping funnel, concentrated sulfuric acid. The reaction takes place and of course you heat then the gas is collected over water. Then method two, uh, we are using ethane dioic acid, that is oxalic acid, then concentrated sulfuric acid for dehydrating the oxalic acid, the heating again, you pass it through potassium hydroxide. Remember in the first one, there was no potassium hydroxide, but in this one, there is potassium hydroxide. One of the product that comes out is carbon monoxide and potassium hydroxide has a very good ability to absorb carbon 4 oxide so that we can have just carbon 2 oxide and remember in case i do not have potassium hydroxide i can use sodium hydroxide they can that chemical can work in the same manner okay that is the that setup in case i want to use uh, carbon 4 oxide and carbon so I pass it over there, yes, the carbon four oxide is reduced to uh, carbon two oxide. I have potassium hydroxide here to absorb the unreacted carbon four oxide. The question to be asked, what is the use of this? It absorbs the unreacted. Remember some of the carbon four oxide will pass over there. And of course, the, the, the gas will be, uh, the, to be collected over water is carbon two oxide without the carbon uh, four oxide. Chemical reactions, 
you can see the first one the dehydration of methanol to co and water yes heat is necessary method two dehydration of the dioic acid yes you can see there carbon monoxide is collected and we have said the way to eliminate this one is to use potassium hydroxide solution method three that reaction we had it even before carbon can reduce carbon monoxide to carbon to oxide heat is necessary maybe how do you dry i can use any of the drying agent i can use concentrated sulfuric acid calcium oxide high and hydrous calcium chloride silica gel among others so carbon to oxide does not react with any it's a neutral gas how do i collect the gas over water method the gas is slightly soluble in water i can use a silage in case i need it to dry yes uh etc etc confirmatory test how do i confirm that this gas is carbon to oxide uh i should ignite it just burn the gas tap the gaseous product directed through lime water so we are using the test for carbon four oxide to test carbon two oxide and how do we do that first of all we burn it these are gas that is combustible we burn it then we pass it through lime water yes pass the resulting gaseous product through lime water and a white precipitate will be formed yes so that is the test for carbon uh two oxide so if you are differentiating carbon two oxide to carbon uh, four oxide maybe directly pass them through lime water calcium four oxide and uh, that carbon four oxide there will be a white precipitate carbon two oxide no white precipitate you can as well burn carbon two oxide is combustible carbon four oxide is not combustible etc etc physical properties property number one very very poisonous extremely poisonous it's colorless odorless tasteless and that makes it very 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 dangerous it has no smell you know you cannot detect that there's the presence of that gas it has it is has no color yes and it is tasteless <coughs> so it is slightly dense than air slightly soluble in water and it forms a neutral solution it is combustible yes carbon two oxide burns with a blue flame it is combustible it boils at negative 111 degrees celsius yes yep a question there explain why carbon two oxide is referred to as a silent killer yes how carbon four, two oxide causes suffocation the patient dies peacefully you know it is a it's a silent killer and for that case my student do not burn charcoal or jico in a, in, a, in a poorly ventilated room because this gas will be produced it causes suffocation remember the, the biology part of it which i don't need to explain that uh, ordinarily oxygen combines with the hemoglobin to form oxyhemoglobin a very soluble and uh, uh, very very soluble substance that flow within the blood streams but carbon 2 oxide will combine with the hemoglobin to form carboxyhemoglobin a very stable compound a solid within the blood uh, the, the blood streams and that is what causes suffocation that's what causes the suffocation because there will be no supply of oxygen to the main organs of the body to the whole body then the patient dies peace free i describe how carbon two oxide causes suffocation and basically that's what i've just said but uh, I, myself i'm not a biologist go consult the biologist and they'll tell you more good uh some chemical properties combustion carbon two oxide burns with a blue flame carbon four oxide is formed yep then carbon to going on uh the reducing property of co uh, that is a co that is carbon two oxide has a very good ability to reduce metal oxides of of course metals lower in the reactivity series and of course it's always oxidized to carbon four oxide for example the black copper two oxide in presence of uh carbon two oxide it will change to copper metal and carbon four oxide so the black will change to brown in case you're working with the lead two oxide it will change to the gray metal lead metal there uh in case you're working with zinc oxide it will change to zinc metal and carbon four oxide and uh, iron two iron three oxide that is changes to uh, the gray metal there 
So this concept here is very much applied in extraction of metals using carbon 2 oxide. So carbon 2 oxide is the best reducing agent. Actually, they say it's the best because it is a gaseous uh, agent there. And of course, it has the higher surface area for that case. And remember, in this one, this should be a gas there, not a solid, not a solid there. So I've stated the application. Kindly, my students know that. Uh, the concept there is about sources of carbon to oxide. And I have tried to illustrate a burning jico here. And I have three regions, region one, region two, region three. Yep. And uh, we want to explain what exactly happened if you burn charcoal in a burner like this one. This is a, an ordinary uh, jico there. So we start with the region one. In region one, there is enough oxygen getting from the bottom there. So as you can see here, remember we are describing the equation from the bottom, region one. Carbon is burning in presence of excess oxygen to give us carbon four oxide. So in region one, carbon four oxide is being produced. The gas continues to region two, carbon four oxide in region two. Now carbon four oxide okay, reacts with charcoal here. That is the charcoal and forms carbon two oxide. Another reaction taking place here, carbon, that is charcoal, is burning in limited supply of oxygen. So to produce carbon uh, to oxide. So at the center here, region two, there is enough of carbon to oxide being produced. Then at the top, the carbon to oxide ignites at the top. Now, remember in this case, there is enough air from outside. So oxygen makes now the carbon to oxide to be converted back to carbon uh, four oxide. Remember some of the carbon two oxide escapes. In case you are working in a poorly ventilated uh, room for that matter, the carbon two oxide will still escape into the air. And that's why my student again, it is not convenient. It is not safe to have a burning jiko in a closed room. However cold it is, my student, leave it outside. Let there be enough oxygen for the charcoal to undergo a complete combustion. So generally you can see what happens in the three regions there. So even when you're having a garage, you cannot have a running engine in a, in a closed garage. You know, the, the, the hydrocarbons, that is the fuel, will burn and there will be production of carbon to oxide. We burn in limited supply of oxygen. So that one, a very common question, my student, uh, just note what is happening. Some uses of carbon two oxide, we can we have said this. It is used in reduction of metals. Yes, like the iron, zinc, lead, copper, etc. It can be used as a fuel, a mixture of carbon two oxide and hydrogen, what we call the water gas. It's a good fuel. And uh, for that matter, nitrogen, a gas for next time. Nitrogen one oxide, laughing gas that is that's the laughing gas nitrogen two oxide nitrogen four oxide ammonia gas though ammonia gas i will not cover too much i've already done this a whole video the chemistry of ammonia that one we've done uh sulfur four oxide yes yeah when we are doing sulfuric acid again i did this so maybe i'll not maybe take much time there then sulfur six oxide hydrogen sulfide yes that is a gas with the rotten egg smell. <laughs> Chlorine gas, a very poisonous gas there. This one I've done. Maybe I'll not repeat as such. Hydrogen chloride, yes, that one I will do. Methane gas, ethene gas, ethyne gas, argon. Good. My student, that is the end of the first part of chemistry of gases. And, uh, other parts are on the way. Thank you so much, my student, for watching. Do not forget to come back. Come back for more content from Dr. Sami. For those doing KCSE 2022 in Kenya, I wish you all the best. Kindly, kindly, my student, may you pass in chemistry and mathematics, my two subjects there. Do not fear the papers. Go for them. Otherwise, thank you and God bless you. God bless you.